My Canine Companion is a national charity founded in June 2011. My Canine Companion's main purpose is to provide highly trained and skilled dogs to people with disabilities like autism. Over 100 dogs have been trained and are helping families around Ireland. The dogs supply a vital lifeline to families. One of the families are the Farrells. When we were told Layla had autism, straight away I was on the internet googling, like, what do we do, where can we go? Because even when as a baby we didn't bring her out, so I knew this has to change. And we were told it was going to get harder before it got easier. She didn't get to go to the park or the playground or even holidays. We'd end up arguing myself and my husband, and then you'd end up either being in a fight with somebody in the public, you know, you'd end up having to answer back and tell them to mind their own business. And we were told it was going to get harder before it got easier. Like many other families affected by autism, the Farrell family needed help. They needed a lifeline. My canine companion came to their rescue. Straight away I was on the internet googling, like, what do we do, where can we go? So I just googled um, help with autism and then Irish guide dogs came up and you know, uh, AADI and then my canine companion. So my canine companion were the best, they were, they were brilliant. They'd done the puppy program, so we got Google as a puppy. So we're only waiting a couple of months. But one of the most innovative things that my canine companion have done is they started this puppy program. So as I said, essentially it's a two-year process from a pup to, to be a fully qualified dog. Um, so within the puppy program, which we were all part yeah. of, um, my canine companion, you, you meet with the charity and they assess you know, your needs and your suitability, I suppose, to be a, a, an owner of an assistance dog. Um, and then, once you're uh, successful in the puppy program, you receive your pup uh, between the pups kind of eight to ten weeks. So it's literally a little ball of fluff. Yeah. And once a month, the trainers come up to Dublin. All the dogs within the area will go to the training class. We're training hand in hand with the charity, obviously, but really we are the full time trainers. We are. Yeah. You know, we have to take that responsibility of being the full time trainer. Um, and then, whereas the trainer comes up every month. She's able to basically assess everybody. Yeah, how we're doing. Yeah. And if you have yeah. any problems, then she work with us on right. that problem while she's around, yeah. or be in constant contact with you until. But it's very seldom there's even problems. Yeah. Is there anybody that really gets involved in this puts their heart and soul yeah. into it? The puppy program is a vital process as it gives both the dog and the child an opportunity to bond. Another benefit of the puppy program is that the pup can adapt to the way their child is affected. For example, with vocal or physical stimming and bolting. He got used for screaming because that's one of Layla's main things. Screams very loud. So if he hadn't been around all that for that first year, there's no way it would walk out with Google and Layla. There's no way. And as well, bringing a big dog into the house, fully trained that she's never met before, just wouldn't work. My little guy's only five, um, and he would have autism and ADHD. He's a real bolter, so if we're out and about, he would be gone. You know, if I let go of his hand, he, he's gone. He'd run. So he could be across the road, he could be in the car. You know, so it's it's a safety issue. You know, for us. So he would have a harness that's attached to Orly's jacket here, right. and then he's holding the handle. Not all children bond straight away with their dogs, and Layla is no different. She knew he was he was here, like, but she, she used to just look at him, and she'd run, run away. She'd never go over to him and hug him, and you know, but he followed her around everywhere. He follows her everywhere. After two years of being with the family, the dog is then sent to Cork for intensive training, which can be hard on the families. Yeah, it was really hard, but it is and it isn't because it's hard because he's not trained. So you're kind of waiting for this trained dog to help you. So there's no. It was, it was kind of a little bit easy knowing that while well, he's going off to do his job and when he comes back he'll be a big help where we can't, you know he wasn't kind of helping out much you know and he was so he was zap size as well before he went down so he's quite big you know the amazing thing that the assistance dogs learn when they're down in cork is how to distinguish between when they're working and when they're not on google's um not walking he's a uh, bouncy bubbly normal dog you know he's real friendly he has a great personality that's the thing about the training and the service dogs they the dogs are left with their personality and like he's giddy and he's just like a normal dog and he's brilliant and then when he's walking that's it the coat is on he's in walk mode and he's a completely different dog you know he's just amazing you have to see it to believe it it was one the mornings there a couple of weeks ago rest socialization morning and um, i let her off and the girls that would be only starting, so it's six, seven-month-old pups. 
the Bombstein Harper was so serious looking and I took the jacket off and she just went in the green area and she just went to the council and said, oh, thank God. We always thought that this, our dogs like, our behaviour like all, oh, that they're mad. And then they stayed home without the jacket and you know it was like, right, we're all right, we're doing all right here. She's as mad as the rest of them without the jacket. Yeah, no, she's just a normal jacket at home. Without her jacket, she's completely um, typical pet, and she we live in Bray, so she'd be running around the place and looking for a run on the beach and stuff. And even in the house, she's excitable and she plays with the kids and stuff like that. But um, as soon as she puts on her jacket, she does go into a, a working mode, and so she, it just automatically kind of calms her down, and she realizes that once even is attached, that I mean, it's hard to for me, to, I suppose for anybody to understand it, but she realizes her role to you and or her responsibility to you um, so even before Ewan was attached like if they were out and about um, and she had her jacket on she would always stay with you and even if we were dead going for a walk or you know um, she would always make she would always be keeping an eye on you or wherever he would go so um, I think they understand their role in terms of the of being calm but also the responsibility to the child I suppose. One of the hard parts of the dogs being so cute is that they attract unwanted attention which can cause them to get distracted from their work. He gets a, an awful lot of unwanted attention. Um, no matter where we go, he's you know he's big, he's white, he's fluffy, he's gorgeous. He's, he's like you'd want to cuddle him and sit with him all day. But even when it says on his coat, do not pet me, do not disturb. And even when we're attached with Layla, people still come over, still touch him, still rub him. Still, a woman actually was on the ground nearly. Um, Layla was sitting in McDonald's and the dog was on the knee and she's on her knees on the floor under the table rubbing them after me telling her to leave them alone three times and she's still constantly doing it. So. And I had the trolley, I had the three kids, you and with autism, quite full on, at the dog, and this old lady came up to me and she went, oh, how are you doing? And she started this with the dog. And I said, I'm sorry. And she said, oh, I know your mum doesn't want me to <laughs> She was just great. And I really, like, yeah, I was yeah, so yeah. stressed. I was already oh, stressed. Yeah. And then the dog was getting excited, was pulling me, was pulling the trolley. The assistant dogs have an effect and benefit both on the children and the whole family. Definitely has an effect on the whole family, yeah. Because um, when we got them, we were dying to bring them out. And the kids, I have two other kids as well. So before they would never want to come out with us. And it was always because they knew it was going to be a disaster. And they were like, what's the point? So then we got the dog and it was like, oh, yeah, we're bringing the dog out. So unless everyone wants to go. And then now, like, we go out every Sunday. We go to Liffey Valley or we, we kind of go out to busy places, you know, public places with the whole family which we never done before. Hey, Hello everyone! <laughs> I went to the shop one day and um, she had Harper and Harper was still in the public programme at that stage and a um, lady came over that would see me in the shops quite a fair bit and we had Harper would have <coughs> stay anyway and she came over and started talking about the dog. Mm -hmm. Ava started communicating back with her yeah. telling her about her job that she's name is Harper. Yeah. yeah. And the lady just turned around and says to me, Laura, she says, all the times I've been seeing you out, I have never heard your daughter speak. Google is like he's like a guard around Layla. So she wears a harness when we're out and she can just walk independently. She can skip down the road. She can she gets to go out and she gets to see things. She gets to he's just amazing. Just couldn't imagine life without him.